Hello everybody, welcome to Owen Automotive. Today we're gonna to work on my own car, the 1967 Jaguar fixed head here in red. It's the one that's fitted with the junkie type motor, so it'll be great to update everybody on the status of this car and what I've been doing with it. Now the reason why this episode's focusing on my own car is because Ian Cranick of Moss Motors has sent me up one of the very first tourist trophy exhausts developed for the Jaguar E-Type. It's in this large box in here, in behind. I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to unbox it, unwrap it, install it, and see how it sounds. So yeah, this is gonna be a good day. Let's get into it. Okay, first impressions looking pretty good here. Got a nice big box protecting all the components. That's something I like to see because sometimes we get muffler systems that are shipped to us with no packaging and they tend to get dinged and dented here and there. And another thing to note here, it says 51 pounds. So in all likelihood, the exhaust here weighs 50 pounds. to see. I was wondering if I was going to need those. Look at that resonator all in stainless. Very nice looking. Look at the tip. Beautiful. So we have one of the down pipes here. I'm impressed it comes with the flange. On a lot of the other sets, you have to buy this separately. There's the flex pipe there. And overall, I'm really loving the bends on this system. Nice and even. Beautiful thing, really, beautiful. Wow, look at that. Oh, the main event. Oh, wow. wow, that is one impressive set of mufflers. Look at the welds in here. That is beautiful. Holy, look at that. That's amazing. Wow, it's too nice for my car. Well, first impressions, how amazing is this? All this stainless steel shining back at me. I just love it. Now this is a very similar kind of specification that I see with other tourist trophy exhausts we've had in the past that we fit to MGBs and other British makes. Kind of a Moss Motor specialty and it's a really high-end exhaust that they manufacture in Taiwan. But seeing it here in E-Type, guys, is just killer. I love the welds. Look at the welds here. Looks like they were done on a machine or something. The bends are beautiful. The polish is beautiful. Now we did a quick look down these mufflers. I'll show you what that shot looks like, and it's straight through. So I can't wait to see what this sounds like either. Uh, let's get the car in the shop. Okay, let's take a tour underneath my car. It's a little embarrassing, I have to admit. I've done 7,000 miles since we first put this motor in the car and I haven't never really wiped it down. And I definitely had a few oil leaks. Here's the air horns I put on. I like those for safety. Don't want anybody running into me. We can see the bottom of the oil pan here. It's really oily. I think one of my cam covers has been leaking. And after 7,000 miles, wow, it sure builds up fast. My dad also noticed that my oil filter housing was leaking and causing a mess down this side. So an easy wipe up, but a mess nonetheless. Now, one thing that did happen to me on this car, and the reason why I'm missing this shield is because my brake light switch, it actually melted and fluid 
gushed out and it ruined my paint all down here. So that's what this primer is all about. But yeah, we can see this exhaust. It was obviously making a lot of noise. It shot here at the flex pipes. They were actually already shot before it went on this car. So yeah, this tourist trophy is gonna be a real upgrade. Yeah, wow. It's pretty dry back here. It's a pinion seal up in there. Looking okay. All right, let's get into it. Okay, this is just too embarrassing. I gotta wipe this down. It's out. Got the old exhaust system down here on the ground and we can learn a lot from it. Here's the flexible part of the down pipe. These sections always fail. You can buy them just as a piece, just this piece and replace it if need be. This one's seen better days and it was a, well, it was a source of leaks, that's for sure. Now this is a bit of a piecemeal system. We can see that one of these S bands in the down pipe's been replaced. And it's a really good example of a cheaply bent unit versus one that's more factory bent on a nice mandrel. And the problem here is the radius. You see on the bend, it tightens in and then goes out, in and out. And that's really undesirable. That's what a cheap system looks like. Here's the main muffler system. Now it had a bit of an oil leak down here. That was from my um, oil filter housing. So I made sure it was really seated this time. Don't want that spoiling my new exhaust system. And this one was on its way out. You can see there was actually a hole here in the back. Pretty nice to see this one going out the door. Gonna replace it with that wonderful tourist trophy unit. Yeah, I'm going the whole way with this thing. Look at these porcelain manifolds. They're a thing of beauty. They're not too expensive and they do hold up pretty well. And they look so amazing underneath the hood. So we're gonna put those on. Now we can see the mounting kit here from Moss Motors, the exhaust mount kit. It comes with the five mounts. The one at the rear has kind of a funny tang on it. It comes with the brass nuts, the flange washers, and that's a nice kit to have. Of course, we have the porcelain manifolds. They're gonna need some studs. I have a few of those in stock, put those on. Got the high-end exhaust manifold gaskets here from Jaguar. I'm gonna do an oil change, look at this. Got the Penzel 2050. I'm gonna put the zinc in there and got a new filter. So yeah, lots to do today. Okay, here we are under the hood of my own car. And yes, this is the junkie type motor. I did an 11 part series with my dad, rebuilding the seized motor back from the dead. Just a budget build, put the original pistons back in there. And it's run really good. I've done 7,000 miles, really no issues to complain of. It's a tremendous motor. It sounds amazing down the highway. And I can't wait to hear what that exhaust sounds like. So what can I say? I've only changed a couple things here under the hood. If I grab my light, I had to change the cooling fan. There's a cool cat in there. And the reason why I had to do that is not because it was overheating, it's because the fan motors kept failing. And I was so sick of motors failing on me, I just put this thing in there and it blows so much more CFM and it's way more reliable. Now another issue right here is this leak at the cam cover. See it pooling there? I, I knew this was happening, but I didn't realize it was creating such a horrible mess underneath. So maybe I'll try to button up this cam cover very soon. That's definitely on the list. And uh, yeah, I put this piece of foam in here. That's a series two piece of foam. It just aids with cooling. That's when I had the single bladed wonder in there, which did the job. It really did do the job. Yeah, and everything else has been really good. No complaints. What a tremendous motor this is. Just uh, love it to death. Let's have a look at the other side. Okay, passenger side. Now I know what everybody's thinking, look, it's all black paint here on the firewall and all that. That's because this car is originally a black car. It's a black 67 fixed head with a black interior. See, everything's still looking pretty presentable here on the passenger side. Carbs are looking pretty good. I could use a new plenium here, that's for sure. That one's just looking old and crusty. Now I also got to put my mud guards in here. See, there's this rubber missing. I'd like to get that in there if I can. That'll help with some of this debris getting up in here. See all the debris around the chassis tag there. And one other thing I gotta do is this, this breather system here. So this is the engine breather system, just this hose right here. And it's just going, it's just a short hose going straight down and that's also causing oil leaks. 
And so I either gotta hook that up to the plenium or just run a longer hose. Two hundred of these. Okay, gonna do a quick tour of my interior. This is much as we received the car. Haven't modified a lot with these door panels or these carpeted sills. I've just learned to love it. Now this car has no sound deadening jute, has no interior upholstery aside from the seats in the rear deck. So it's a pretty visceral experience. You're really in there with the motor. You really hear it and you really feel it. When Jaguar outfitted these cars originally, they used two layers of three quarter inch jute and the original specification is a lot more docile. So I'm kind of falling in love with this no sound deadening approach. You can see the console here. It's just uh, bare steel, yeah. And I do really enjoy this dashboard. It's all original, never really been modified. And uh, yeah, it's all nice and as you would expect. Now, here we go. We can see 54,000 original miles. That's original to the car. I got it at 47,000 miles and we're gonna keep racking them up. I should mention that these seats here, they were done by my friend Jeff at Rightway Heritage Trimming and uh, they still look amazing. So good job, Jeff. music yeah night and day difference between the old and the new manifolds see the old one here from 69 there's a bit of porcelain left on there but not a lot these things suffer from heat cycles and especially moisture if moisture gets on them so I'm gonna try my best not to drive in the rain to preserve this porcelain here wow amazing looking though Look at that, pretty pleased with those porcelain manifolds, the shiniest part of the engine now, that's for sure. So one thing I did was I installed them with flat washers. Jaguar never did that from the factory. It was literally just a little ring washer, lock washer and a nut. But if I install it with just the lock washer on the porcelain, it cracks the porcelain and it makes an awful noise and has an awful hand feel. So definitely put on a flat washer and protect the porcelain. Also, this heat shield here, it's from a Series 2. I prefer the heat shield to protect the alternator over the rain shield because I don't really drive in the rain. And that's why I fitted these. You know, I'm not driving this thing in the rain, and I think these will hold up just fine. Let's see what they look like in 7,000 miles, everybody. Look at these downpipes. They are a thing of beauty. The first part of the tourist trophy system we're putting on. So you can see kind of a crushed seal in there, that ring seal, that's what goes on the end. And we'll just put these on loosely because the name of the game here is get that central muffler system on these mounts that my dad's putting in. And we want the mounts not to be kicked too much one way or the other. So wanna make sure that the central exhaust system is nicely in place without the mounts being twisted and then we can tighten it all up in one go. So yeah, let's put these uh, downpipes in first. Yeah, I got the high temp red RTV sealant here. I think it's a silicone. It's here on its way up. We go way up in there. You need to hold it. Oh, it's still warm. Still warm. Just okay, getting the center section ready to go on. Got the clamps on there. My dad noticed uh, it's been cleaned out, so there's no burrs, eh? It's super smooth, which is really nice. Yeah. It's not going to be a fight to put together. Awesome. Ah, <laughs> these things look brilliant. It's pretty damn close. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Oh, never looked so good under here. So the main muffler, the central part here, it fit quite nicely. The rubber mounts aren't tweaked over at all. That's what we like to see. 
Then you look at the downpipes and they have a really nice shape to them. Seem to coalesce really nicely, see that? And on the bottom here, what we're looking for is clearance from the pan, which we have from the torsion bars and on the pan up here near the flange. So it looks really good. Really happy with that. We can proceed and put the resonators on the rear. Interpipes going on. Do it once. Okay, final tightening down. Got all the clamps tightened. And the system looks pretty centered, so I think it's a go. Really impressed with this Tourist Trophy system. It seemed to be deburred. We weren't cutting ourselves on it, and it fit really nicely underneath the car. And look at this. I mean, just look at what it looks like. It's stunning. Now this main muffler system we attach so the brackets go on the inside of the mounts. That's so we still got adjustment. And we put them in the uppermost position, tried to tuck this exhaust up and away as far in as we could. Don't want anything damaging this beautiful system. I mean, just look at it. Look at this. What a thing of beauty, I love it. I guess that leaves one thing left. Let's see how it sounds. Okay, here we go, first start. Sounds good. That has a bit more grunt in there, I like it. sounds and how it performs. Really anxious to get this thing on the highway. Let's take it for a drive. Let's try this out. Okay, here we go, down to the depths of the biggest parkade in my hometown. Just trying to get a real honest sound and hear how the sound bounces. And it's hard to really capture the sound when you're going down the road with the wind noise, and the rattling, differential in the motor. So I think this is gonna be a good example of how it drives now.
sounds pretty amazing down in this parkade. It really gives you an idea of the resonance of the muffler system and how much different it is from the mild steel one I had before. And I have to say, I'm pretty impressed. Down here, I'm just crawling through the parkade and it's, it's pretty quiet and docile. It won't annoy the neighbors, but when you want that barky sound, it really has it. It really performs when you want it to. It kind of works in both ways there, that multi-use. Yeah, I'm pretty impressed. I'm in love with this exhaust. What do you guys think? Good. Let's go. Let's go. All right, that does it for this video. A huge thank you to Moss Motors and Ian Craddock for giving me one of the first Tourist Trophy E-Type exhausts. I'm just going to go ahead over to their website right now. And it's well known that Moss Motors purchased XKs Unlimited not that long ago. And they're moving into the Jaguar parts scene in a big way. And they're building on this catalog, case in point, this Tourist Trophy exhaust. It's exclusively developed by Moss Motors for all the different types of E-types. You can get it for the 3.8 liter with the long resonators, the 4.2 liter Series 1 with the short resonators, and also the Series 2 car that has the resonators that splay out on either side of the license plate. So really nice to have all those three options available. Now, as you can see here, everything is clearly photographed on the website, and that's why I like to see what's shown on the website is what gets delivered, and that really appeals to me. All right, well, that does it for this video. As always, if you have any tips, tricks, comments, or trade secrets, I love to hear from you in the comments below. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you later. Bye-bye.